cutting tools of choice. Um, I will be using a rotary cutter, um, mainly because it's lots of straight lines. So rotary cutter, fresh new blade, perfect for that. If you haven't got a rotary cutter or um, you're a little bit nervous of them, then you can absolutely use a pair of scissors um make sure they're nice and sharp um i've got my snips ready to trim off any threads and um, i've also got an exacto knife um i may or may not use it sometimes when i'm using my rotary cutter i don't like to go too close to the points on the edges so um sometimes there's a tiny little bit of cork left i might use my exacto knife for that and um, I've got my lighter. You can use a normal lighter. Um, I use this one because um, I think as I've stated many times before, I have a tendency to burn my fingers. Um, and so this one here is perfect for um, burning off all those little fuzzy bits of cork. But I've got um, my trusty unpicker because, well, always do something wrong. Um, a nice little pile of clips. Um, I've got an air erasing marker here, um, which I may or may not use. Um, I've got an adjustable um, chalk marker there that comes in three different colours. I've got some Gutemann polyester thread, which I will be using in the needle and the bobbin. Um, some Microtex 9014 needles. Um, my trusty um, fabric glue and my leather roller applicator for the glue. Um, you do not need one of these. You can, of course, just do, um, sorry, put the glue on with your fingers, but um, as you can see by the state of my roller, um, it does get a little bit messy. So um, a, a roller applicator is a little bit easier than just using your fingers. Okay, so to start with, um, I've got a selection of rulers, um, depending on how I feel at the time. Um, this one is in centimetres, um, but I do have a variety of um, quilting rulers, which are really, really handy for when you're cutting things out like this. Um, I might start with the larger one and then work my way down to the smaller ones, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, move those out of the way. And obviously I've got my cork fabric, which we're going to cut out from. I've got my label there. And I also have a protractor, which I have stolen from the children's pencil case. I'm sure they won't miss it. Um, getting to the end of the year. Don't think they're doing maths anymore. It'll be fine. Um, if you haven't got a protractor, you don't have to buy one. A cup or something will work absolutely fine. Something that's got a curved edge like this. Um, will work perfectly if you don't have one of these. Okay, so I'm hoping you can see this okay. Um, I've had to close the blinds a little bit because the sun is so bright. I thought it would be okay, but it's obviously not. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully this will be okay. Um, so we're going to start off with our piece of cork. Now my cork is too big for the project that we're doing. So um, we're going to start by cutting it down to size. Um, I have made a couple of little marks on it to begin with because, um, you know, let's try and make it right. So um, we need to cut our fabric to um, five inches by eight inches. Um, I am doing it in inches because I just think that... Um, most patterns are done in inches anyway. I will put um, the calculations in centimeters for you um, probably somewhere in the comments. Move this away, if you can see. I'm just going to cut that last little bit because then we make sure that we've still got this nice without any cuts in it and we can use that for something else. So we've got our piece of cork here, obviously it's upside down. Um, we now need to cut this into four. Um, two and a half inches down the short edge 
and oh wrong way around let's try and do it this way um it will be four inches across the longer edge so when we cut this we're going to end up with four pieces we hope four equal pieces that would be nice wouldn't it So we've got our four pieces, they are more or less the same. Now, don't worry too much about making these perfectly the same size because when we cut, um, sorry, or when we sew, they do tend to shift a little. So we're gonna neaten up the edges at the very end. So long as they are millimeters close um, to being the same, that is absolutely perfect. So. We're going to decide which two we want for our front um, and which two are going to be our internal ones. Um, bearing in mind, I am actually going to put um, a label on mine. So um, think about that as well, label placement. Um, I think I'm going to put this one inside because it has a mark on it, which is fine, but I'm not overly keen on that. I think I'm going to go with these two for the front and this one inside. Right, so these are my two outside pieces and these are the two pieces that we are going to cut our lovely curve out of. So I'm going to put one to the side for the moment. This is our one piece we're going to start with. So I'm going to turn that over. Now I haven't marked this, so I'm doing this. This is where um, our protractor, or you can use a normal ruler, it's entirely up to you. Um, so I'm going to measure in from the side. I'm going to measure in um, a centimeter and a half on one side and a centimeter and a half on the other side. Make sure you're using a pen where um, it doesn't get seen because um, when we cut this out, you might have a little bit left. Um, I'm doing this so um, obviously you can see. Then we're gonna take our protractor or our rounded curve. And I'm hoping you can see this. I'm going to put our curve here so as the curve lines up with our two marks. So then this is going to be the piece that we cut out. Okay. Now we'll need to do that on our second piece as well. So I'll show you again. Okay, so I've got mine cut out. I just used a pair of scissors. Um, if you've got a really small rotary cutter, um, that would be perfect. Personally, I like to use scissors when I'm cutting out curves because, um, yeah, I don't really like curves. But there you go. Um, so what we're going to do now is um, we're going to treat this curved edge because if we don't, then this with wear and tear will start to get lots of little fuzzy bits. Um, it's fine at the moment, but over time that will wear. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to take my lighter um, and I'm just going to burn very gently across the edges. We only need to burn this piece for the moment. Um, we don't need to burn the whole, the size and everything. We're going to do that when, once we've sewn it all together. Um, what we're now going to do is um, coat with our fabric glue. I've got my very messy tool here. Um, again, we're only doing this curve. Can't see. We're only doing the curve. We are not doing the sides. We will do those when um, we put everything together. So I'm just going to very gently get glue over that. I told you I'm really messy with this.
I've got my piece that I'm going to put my label onto. Um, I'm just going to use my sew line glue here. Um, it's just to hold this a little. Don't copy me. We're not supposed to use glue on top of the machine. I've only put a little bit in the middle because I'm going to sew around the outside and I really don't want any glue gumming up my needle. Let's move that out of the way because my fabric has um, lost its centre line again. So I'm just going to squeeze that a little bit so I can find the centre. Oh, my gecko is jumping everywhere. So I'm going to put him, line him up in the middle. I'm going to do it about a centimetre, three-eighths of an inch more or less. Okay, and then I'm going to just top stitch around the edge just to sew him on. Okay, so that's the front of that done. What we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the machine and I'm going to top stitch only here. So we're going to top stitch across the top here. We're going to go slowly around the curve and then we're going to come across this side. We're not top stitching around the bottom. Um, we are only doing, say, so across the top here, around the curve and across the top. And we're going to do that on both of our curved pieces. I don't know if you can see, on my machine here, on my foot, I have some little red marks. Um, so all I'm doing is I'm lining up this red mark with the curve. And so I'm just going to do one stitch, turn a little, one stitch, turn a little. So we've got our two curved pieces with our label on and so now I'm just going to burn the top edge of each of the other two pieces. And um, I'm going to go across the top again with the glue on both of those burnt edges. Again, I'm not doing the other three sides, just the top sides, because um, when we finished, we'll go around and do it all together as a group. So um, just for the moment, just these two top edges, and then I'm going to top stitch across the top of that one edge, um, just to make it nice and decorative like the others. Okay, so, Surprisingly, we're actually almost finished. Um, what we're going to do, these ones with the curves are our outer edges. So we're gonna put those aside just for one minute. I'm gonna put those over there. Our two center pieces, I'm going to put them wrong size together. Oh, extra bit of thread left behind. I'm gonna put them both wrong size together. Now, this is where if your size and the bottom are ever so slightly out, um, this is where we're going to make the difference. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to line up the corners and the top edges. So now we're going to take one of our front pieces 
and we're going to take another clip again we're making sure that this top edge lines up nicely with the corner and top edge there What we're going to do is, we are going to top stitch carefully around one, two, three sides, meeting up with our stitching from either side here. I have um, activated my walking foot at the back here. Um, we are going to now sew this with a three millimeter stitch length and as we have also done around the rest of it it's going to be in probably two or three millimeters in the seam allowance so let's take that one clip off slide it over gently now I'm going to line the needle up with the very edge of the stitching here so it should, in theory, all line up nicely. So let's put that down, down, yep, perfect. Now, I am going to say this slowly because cork is incredibly spongy. Um, and if we don't sew slowly, it will shift an awful lot. So I have got my walking foot on here, so that should help a little. Um, hopefully we won't have any problems. So let's see what happens. not very happy I probably could do with using a stiletto here as always mine seems to have wandered off okay so I'm going to swivel this round and um, so we're going to keep the presser foot down um, sorry, we're going to keep the needle down and lift the presser foot up. Mine is automatic. If yours isn't automatic, obviously make sure your needle is in. And there you go. Make sure your needle is in there. Um, lift up your presser foot from the back. Spin this around. Make sure that you're lined up correctly. As I say, mine's got these nice little red lines that I can line up with. If you haven't got that, you could always mark a little line on there yourself so it's always there. So make sure that's lined up. I'm going to make sure again that we haven't shifted. Mine all lined up nice and neat at the bottom. Um, then we're going to put our presser foot back down again and continue sewing at the same seam allowance as we did before. Okay, so here is our card wallet, all trimmed up. So now you can see, hopefully, um, that the sides on this are pretty much even. So what we're actually going to do is, we're gonna take our lighter, um, and as we've done before, we are going to burn all around the edges because where we've just trimmed up, obviously now again, um, we're going to have lots of little fuzzy bits that are going to appear. 
Okay, so all of those sides are now sealed. So now we need to take our fabric glue, whichever fabric glue you've got. It's a little bit easier on here because it's that bit thicker. And dump some on there. And we've got our trusty spinny tool. Which is good because it rolls it along and it actually takes off the excess as well. Which is good. So here it is, our finished slim card wallet. Um, I'm going to be using this one because it's got this nice bright blue stitching and I'm not sure my husband really wants it. Um, I gift it to a friend. Mm, we'll see. Don't forget to share your creations on that Oso oh Gecko cork fabric sewing corner. Um, if you're not part of the group already, then you really should be. So um, can't wait to see what you make. Bye.